So what we've got here is the new 65D distributor from PowerSpark that I'm going to go ahead and recurve for the, uh, the Red Mini. And um, I'm going for a fast road curve, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this new unit. They do a great job of packaging these things. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and check the advanced curve that it has now and then make adjustments as needed to suit this application. So follow along while I do that. So I've removed the top half and as you can see same basic construction internally um, primary spring secondary spring. So once I've removed the drive dog on the bottom I'll be able to extract this and then we'll put it on my distributor machine and find out what the curve is. By the way, when I reset this, I'll have to put new um, compound on here for for the thermal absorption of the heat that's produced by this uh, module. Always make sure you put fresh compound on. Like before, I always start out by checking the total advance. So on this particular unit, it gives approximately 14 degrees, maybe a little more. Seems about 14 and a half. So I'm gonna have to reduce this one just by a little bit. Probably gonna go down to 11, maybe 11 and a half. All right, so I've gone ahead and added material down here to the cam stopper. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is check the overall advance. Again, I was shooting for approximately 11 degrees. And let me go ahead and zero this out. 11, almost 11 and a half. So I'm going to stop there and continue on towards the springs. All right, so I now have the 65D distributor in my distributor machine. I've got the timing wheel up here. And as you can see, there's a pointer attached to the um, plate. Now the 65D does have a different timing system than the 25 and the 45. These posts that you see uh, here, you know that's what controls the timing so it actually moves the timing plate rather than the rotor itself so there's a different setup for doing this but anyway I'll go ahead and get the camera set up on top so you can see the overall movement of the uh, advanced mechanism so I've got the distributors in my distributor machine and I'm trying to record the footage on this but again I'm having troubles with my phone settings so I'm just gonna provide a quick example of what this looks like so you'll see there's a pointer set at 10 degrees and when I accelerate it reaches uh, zero or just past zero so right there would be five degrees and with the stock springs this is about 1200 or so rpms and then full advance is about 1900 rpms or so anyway I just wanted to provide an example of what this looks like because I really can't capture the detail that I want to on my phone but I'm going to go ahead and sort out the springs and get this curve finished. Well, I've completed the springing phase of this distributor. Um, the original springs here on the right. And you can see that they're significantly different compared to the ones I ended up with. Um, I'm guessing this was the original primary. This was the secondary. But both of these springs were... Uh, stretched onto the post so they were both activating 100% um, of the time so the curve on this was basically a linear line from zero to full advance now uh, what I've done here is I've lightened up the primary spring and I've given a secondary spring um, the necessary free play you can see there to provide the correct advance requirements for the red car now the old springs went like I said, in a linear way straight to full advance, whereas this one reaches six and a half degrees of advance on the primary spring, and then the secondary spring engages at that point and takes it all the way to full advance. So this particular distributor hits uh, six and a half degrees at 1250 RPMs, again, distributor speed, and 11 and a half degrees, which is full advance at 2250 RPMs, again, distributor speed. This also retracts back to zero uh, above 550 RPMs. So this will give very good characteristics uh, above 1,000 
1200 RPMs, it'll start engaging. Anything below that, this will be totally locked out, essentially, so no advance will happen below uh, 1100 RPMs. So there'll be no idle fluctuation. So this is exactly what I wanted to end up with for the red car. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and we'll get it back into the car and um, finish the tuning. So I've got the drive back into here, got the drive dog back on, and um, make sure you coat this with thermal paste before you reassemble the next step because it's important that the processor has a good uh, bond with the body because the body is essentially the heat sink for it. So um, just a thin spread of any thermal compound will work. Well, I've got it all back together now, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the car and test the curve and see how I did. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, just give me a thumbs up or just send me a message saying, hey, show me more videos about uh, the 45 or the 59 or more 65s. I do have another 65 I need to curve, um, so I might do another video on that one. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.